Welcome in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to look at this verse that Christ is the visible representation of the invisible God. That's Colossians 1, 15. I think it's a, a beautiful picture. The word icon is used there from the Greek um, image. And I thought I would use that to expand upon um, the viewership that I have on this channel, which I think predominantly has been mostly from the USA or Canada or Australia or the UK. And I'm hoping to get um, connected with other people from a Catholic background and Orthodox as well. I hope that um, we could all be of one mind and one love in Jesus, like it says in Philippians 2, 2. Then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being in one in spirit and one in mind. And although there are a plethora, a lot of um, theological differences, I'm sure we can find much more to be of one mind on and one love on, and that is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I was walking through a shopping mall in Australia and there was a bookstore and a whole range of art iconography. And the word icon is the same word used in this scripture that Christ is the visible representation of the invisible God or the image of the invisible God. It's the same word icon in the Greek. And my Greek Orthodox or Orthodox brothers and sisters from that tradition and Christian history, which is very long and rich, and I do not know much about it. Yet what I do know is that iconography is a part of their form of focusing on God. And I would love for you to inform me more about that in the comments, and I will do my own research as well. The picture that I saw was of Jesus, or the image that someone had imagined of what Jesus would be looking like. And I walked up to the stand and I said, that's a beautiful artwork. So that, that love for Jesus was the first kind of connection. Uh, I was given a, a prayer as a gift and I read that and I thought, wow, that's a different format of prayer. I think is a, is a fascinating thing because as I was looking at Acts this morning, I was realizing that there were quite a lot of interesting experiences that we read about. And now Acts is written by Luke. God's Spirit pouring down upon the believers. Um, but I would like to draw out two things that happen. A sense of awe amongst the believers. There was a sense of God's presence. And I think that's one of the most beautiful things about following Christ. That often, with others, doesn't matter what denomination or tradition they're from, there is... This sense of awe in the goodness of God, that God's Spirit is tangibly present. People were speaking in different languages, and those Jewish listeners heard people from their region of the world. So their common language would have been Hebrew, but they heard them speaking their, their language that they grew up with. And they were astonished because the People that were speaking in those different languages had not learned them through linguistic study. It reminds me of the reverse of the Tower of Babel. There was clarity. They could speak a miraculous way of speaking. And you knew that these people hadn't studied this also because they were from which often the Pharisees took um, this as an insult and said this as an insult to people of Galilee. Um, and even scriptural references refer to Galilee in this area as not being of the greatest standing or not of the most importance and yet we know it's from where Jesus is from and his disciples are from as well who are speaking in these other languages that they hadn't learned but God had given them and at the same time people thought they were drunk and Peter then addresses this and talks about Joel and uses the scripture and the prophecy of the past and reads things like this your sons and daughters they'll prophesy I think I'd leave you just with this one thought, that when God's presence dwells with us, we experience the visible representation of the invisible God. We are experiencing Christ. And that we are a family, a body, and that is 
far more important than the areas that we may disagree or talk about as our distinctions or differences. If you found this video helpful, if you um, would like to follow me along, you're very welcome to do that. I make a number of videos each week about the person of Jesus, and I hope that you'll um, give me some feedback, and I look forward to reading that in the comments. Bye for now.